On a night when Dean Smith may be passed at the top of the all-time wins list in college basketball, we welcome you to the building named in his honor. Always a tough ticket here at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill as the ACC plays host to the Big East tonight. The first of five straight home games for the number two team in the nation coming in having won seven games in a row. The Tower Heels of North Carolina at 10 and 1, hosting the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, who have won five games in a row. Terry Gannon, along with Len Elmore, here. Glad to have her with us on what could be an historic night in college basketball. Bob Knight going for win 880. Texas Tech and UNLV after we're done here in Chapel Hill. We may mention that a few times throughout the broadcast, but. These two teams, this is a tough assignment for Rutgers on the road. Oh, it certainly is. I mean, you got a team like Carolina, won seven consecutive games since their loss to Gonzaga back in November, and they've been doing it with balance. Their youth has really made their presence known, and in a sense, you know, this is one of the highest scoring teams in the country. Now, when you're talking about Rutgers, this is a team that had some high hopes, but they're without their leading scorer, J.R. Inman, as well as their starting point guard, Anthony Farmer. Both of them suspended for one game because of violation of academic policy, school policy. Having said that, Marquise Webb is the guy that's going to have to step up. He's versatile. He can handle pass and score. His numbers are down, but he's got the ability. And Tyler Hansbro for Carolina, picking up where he left off as the unanimous ACC Rookie of the Year in all conference. And when we check out the starting lineups, it's Courtney Nelson and Hamade Enjai, the two guys who are in the starting lineup for Farmer and Inman. And on the other side, Ty Lawson, the freshman from Clinton, Maryland, starting his seventh straight game at the point. Bobby Fraser still out with the injured foot. So the tip controlled by North Carolina. Carl Hess, Bernard Clinton, and Michael Stevens as Carolina and Brandon Wright get off on the right foot. Ominous start for Rutgers in man-to-man. -man. They're looking to try to control tempo and try to limit the easy opportunities. That was about as easy as you get for Carolina. Pressure man-to-man -man from the heels on the first set defensively. Here's Hill, Adrian Hill. Misses, gets his own rebound. The offensive stick back for the senior from Canton, Ohio. And that's one way to get it done on the offensive end. But controlling tempo, the early moments of the game, obviously important for Rutgers. It's tough to control tempo when you're down 10, 12 points. Oh, absolutely. And what they've got to be able to do once again is limit the easy baskets, as I said, and do exactly what they did in their first possession, attack. Here's Nelson, a sophomore from Newark, who gives it off to Marquise Webb, who can shoot the three. Enjai, just a couple of years of organized basketball here in the U.S., and a walking violation on Courtney Nelson. Turnover, giving it back to the heels. Well, the fact that Rutgers is going to want to control this tempo is not lost in Carolina. They've come out here really aggressively, trying to pressure Rutgers, force turnovers as they did there which they tend to do anyway, and obviously the Heels like to run, a team that averages 90 points a game against a team in Rutgers that only averages 62, and without the two starters, you're taking away 20 points. Hansbro misses badly on his first attempt. And there's the walk-up tempo you talked about. Again, you talked about Carolina trying to pressure, which they will do, but you, know, you have teams sometimes that they smell weakness, and Carolina is one of those teams. Nelson couldn't find anyone, so Fred Hill's team gets a timeout. 2-2 in the early going here in Chapel Hill. Roy Williams in his 19th season as a head coach. Obviously, uh, all the success at Kansas, but a longtime assistant to Dean Smith as well. Fred Hill, a Jersey guy, from Verona, 47 years of age, and in his first year as the head coach at Rutgers. And it's a lot different in that first seat as opposed to the second seat where Fred Hill, Fred Hill has dwelled with Seton Hall, obviously Rutgers and Villanova. Key strategist, key recruiter for those teams. Key to their success. Nelson with the shot clock running down, had to force one, and here comes North Carolina forcing the tempo from their standpoint. Well, Carolina, you know they're going to push the ball. They're going to try to push it, run, but they want to run intelligently. Yeah, I've talked to Roy Williams about that time and time again. They push the ball up and down the floor just about every possession when they can, but he doesn't want them to go breakneck and be out of control. 
Fred Hill up off the bench, wanting Nelson, the point guard, to bring it back out, run some clock. And you have to like what Fred Hill has done here with his two starters. He's looking long term. And I know he hates to come in here without two of his top guns. But in the long run, it was the right thing to do. Deron Griffin misses from long range, starting the Carolina break. Well, as Fred told us again, the two guys, Farmer and Inman, are sophomores. They're going to be leaders down the road. And he wants to be able to establish that leadership, establish the rules, and make them accountable early enough so that they can be leaders. Good defense by NJ to get the hand up and force the miss from Hansborough, who's 0 for 2. Again, yeah, talk about smelling weakness. Carolina does it on the defensive end. And, and again, we talked about the way they pressure, but it just seems like they're a little more, maybe a step more anxious in stepping out in the passing lanes and denying on the wing. They want to try and put this thing away early. The uh, question for Rutgers is, where's the scoring going to come from? Maybe Marquise Webb. He hasn't taken a shot yet. The miss by Nelson tipped out. It'll stay here. Anthony Farmer, J.R. Inman out, as we told you, at the start of the game because of a violation of team academic policy. And you'd, you'd love to look ahead and say, maybe South Carolina State will rest these guys the next game. But uh, he said this is the right way to do it. It was the next game. Even though we're going to Chapel Hill, we'll take on number two. We've got to do it now. It's a statement that will have long-term positive effects, you hope. Webb controls it out top. Griffin got by Terry, who gambled for the steal. There's the air ball. Here comes Rayshon Terry. Out of control off of his foot, so he gets it back to the Scarlet Knights. Talked you about the uh, historic evening that we could have ahead. Could be history in the making tonight. Right after we're done, 9 Eastern, Dean Smith could be passed by Bob Knight as Texas Tech hosts UNLV. ESPN2 also available on ESPN2 HD. And if they don't get it done there, Bob Knight could get it done against New Mexico on Monday, also on ESPN2. Well, it's an eventuality. The question is whether we'll be able to cover it or not. But you know Dean Smith is going to be waiting by the phone, as he said often enough, that he'll be the first to call Bob Knight to congratulate him. Webb off the glass and in with his first shot. Didn't plan on it that way, but he's on the board. 5-2, Rutger. Yeah, Coach Smith said he wasn't going to travel to Lubbock, but he would be one of the first to call Bob Knight. Right to the left hand, the freshman from Nashville, Tennessee, who has been in double figures in all 11 games to this point. He's got four. And everybody knew that Brandon Knight was good, but this good? As you mentioned before, he's second in the ACC in field goal percentage and just one of those guys that's really flourished in this Carolina system. Brian right, Conn gives it back to North Carolina. The pressure out front starting to hurt the Scarlet Knights. Dean Smith, one of the legendary figures. Bob Knight going for 880 tonight when we're done. We welcome you back to the Smith Center here in Chapel Hill, named in honor of Dean Smith, of course, sitting on 879 and retired. Bob Knight, very active, sitting on 879. He's entered the arena down in Lubbock. UNLV taking on Texas Tech. That'll be up right after we're done here in Chapel Hill on ESPN2. And those two legendary figures, Bob Knight in his 41st year, you see the wins, but uh, Bob Knight with three national titles, Dean Smith with a couple, but you, a lot of ways to get it done Len, but they're also similar in, in many of the core ways. Well, they certainly are. Again, you talk about philosophies. Both of them have traditional values that they've imparted to their teams, but you look at Bob Knight's numbers and you recognize that he's had to do it in the beginning with Army. Now, you know, Dean Smith has been with North Carolina his whole career, and to take nothing away from him, bottom line is Bob Knight has had to do it with different types of teams, Army, and then you have Indiana sandwiched between Army and Texas Tech. So, you know, you mentioned different ways to get to the same point. Wayne Ellington, the freshman from the Philly area, knocks down the jumper. Carolina with a two-point lead. I think you and I, as it stays here at the Rutgers end, having played in the ACC and been on too many of the losing ends of uh, some of those 879 wins from Dean Smith. I speak for yourself, <laughs> my brother. Because <laughs> we won we won four out of seven. So when well, I yeah, played. three of them then, at least. you, you got to mention the losses, too. But when you stepped on the floor, Len, didn't you feel elevated? You felt a part of something bigger than yourself because he was on the other bench. The, the putback by Frank Russell, the senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, he's come home here. He's got a deuce. Oh, absolutely. You look over there and you see Dean Smith, you know that there's a challenge waiting for you out there. And his teams will always put 
prepared. They always played with a certain level of intensity that it made you kind of dread going out there and trying to run with them. Deion Thompson, the offensive rebound. He's off the bench as well as Danny Green for Roy Williams. 36 years as the head coach here in Chapel Hill. The two national titles, 82, of course, the shot by Michael Jordan at a 93. How about the 27 consecutive 21 seasons, though? The consistency well, exactly. the entire career. Exactly. That's hard to do. Well, it is. And even by today's standards, I mean, with the talent yeah. that North Carolina gets today, I mean, for Roy Williams to be able to do that same thing would still be quite an accomplishment. And obviously, Roy Williams is just stockpiling talent. Adrian Hill with the foul. And Frank Russell picked up his first just a moment before that. But uh, Roy Williams on the bench, part of 275 of those victories that Dean Smith had here at North Carolina as an assistant coach 10 years as an assistant Roy was. And I talked to him before the game and asked him about his mentor being passed on the all-time wins list. He said, obviously, you don't like to see that happen. But if he could pick one guy, if it had to happen, he would pick Bob Knight to pass Dean Smith. And he said he learned more from Dean Smith, obviously, than any other coach about coaching. But second on that list would be Bob Knight. Well, again, if, if he learned something from Bob Knight, obviously he's translated very well. I mean, Roy Williams winning 80% of his games. One of only four coaches to do that, and that's just that's just tremendous when you look at the consistency we talked about before. And again, when you talk about coaches today, learning, watching, being mentored, invariably Bob Knight's name comes up, as does Dean Smith. Marcus Kinyard. In off the bench for Roy Williams right now, pressuring the basketball to Marquise Webb, looking for some outlet. The outlet was Danny Green. Well, Webb got pushed right there, no call. And again, Rutgers, you give them credit, even though Danny Green tips that one in. Rutgers trying to stay close. They've got to settle down a little bit, get back to executing. But the way they've been able to do it with a lot of motion, moving the ball, and guys attacking when there are lanes available, and shooting open shots when those shots become available. Green tipped it in after he helped start the turnover. Webb doing more of the ball handling duties right now. Gets it to Griffin, 15-footer, a little bit strong. Thompson clears it. Here comes Lawson. The point guard stops, pops, free throw line jumper off the heel. And Hansbro picks up his first over the back. And again, you look at the pressure right there. There was a push. Ginyard gave him a little shove with the right hand. No call. And Carolina turns it into a basket. Again, in transition, you can't afford open floor turnovers. You can't give Carolina steals because they are lightning quick to the other end. And they will convert more than not. Hansbro goes to the bench. Alex Stevenson, the freshman from the L.A. area, in for the first time. 51% from the floor and nearly 40% from the three-point arc. So much talent on this team. At times, that could be a problem. However, Carolina tends to push it up, go up and down 94 feet, play a lot of guys. But players do have to accept different roles this year, Len. Griffin draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Well, they certainly do. And again, it's the freshman impact. It's kind of limited the minutes uh, of some of the guys who played a lot of minutes last year. I mean, when you take a look at Rayshon Terry, Wes Miller, Marcus Ginyard, Danny Green, you know, their minutes have been limited and so is their production. You look at the impact of the freshman right there. And boy, if they're surpassing that trio, pretty good. That's not bad. Kants, May, Felton, their jerseys will go up into the rafters here at the end of December. They're going to take all of those jerseys down, by the way, and put up new ones. Not retired, but they do hang them in the rafters. Part of that national championship team. They see them pretty impressive. And if you're a, an opposing player who comes here for the first time and Rutgers doing just that, it's an intimidating sight. When you walk in, you see the five, actually, national championship banners, including the 1924 one and all the jerseys. Frank Russell picks up his second. There are the banners, along with 57, 82, 93, and, of course, the last one. Well, you can make it work for you the other way, too. You can look up there and say, I want one of those. Or you can say, you know, 
It's not going to happen to us right now, not in this place. So use it as a motivating factor. But nevertheless, it, it's something to come in here. If you're a basketball historian, as most of these young men should be, and you recognize those names in those jerseys, it gives you pause for thought, no question. Wes Miller off the bench. Numbers down a little bit for him, as is his time. Three-point shooter, but not shooting well this year. Having to play a little bit of the point guard spot, though, with Bobby Fraser out. Well, again, Wes Miller's time has been a victim of the impact of the freshman, Ty Lawson. Stevenson, the putback. Carolina traditionally hasn't really recruited out in California and L.A. Roy Williams starting to do that now, though. They spread the floor, little four corners here at uh, the home of Keith Smith. Tipped up, get it back. Griffin and Webb will control with a new shot clock. Again, Courtney Nelson creating some opportunities for himself, just unable to finish. But if you're Rutgers, you just got to persevere, continue to try to take Carolina off the bounce and can't turn it over. Fourth turnover, there's a block, good one, by Njai, who came into the game with 18 blocks, one of the leaders in the Big East. And Fred Hill tells his guys, slow it down. Don't be so much into a hurry. Be quick, but not in a hurry. Speaking of great coaches, it's John Wooden's patent stadium. Hill looks for somewhere to go. That wasn't it. Stevenson back to the basket with a drop stop. As a post player, you got to like what you just saw. Oh, absolutely. Again, took his time, felt the defender on his back. Nice drop step to the basket, used the glass. Just another one of those fundamentally sound inside player and I talked about stockpiling talent you got Stevenson you got hands bro obviously you got Brandon Wright it's an embarrassment of riches for the Tar Heels it is, isn't it tipped out and the fifth turnover by the Scarlet Knights so Roy Williams club enjoying a six-point lead when we come back we'll hear from Dean Smith himself about uh, tonight he broke eight off rubs record so long as the years went along, the winds piled up. The fruits of his labor recorded in left-hand margins, across headlines, down newspaper columns, and on the faces of Bob Knight's fans, players, and admirers. Ruffling feathers, molding young minds, writing his own legend on the way to 880 career victories, passing Dean Smith, and we get Coach Smith's thoughts on passing the legendary Adolph Ruff. Well, first of all, I guess about three years earlier, somebody mentioned that, and I said, gosh, I'd rather retire before I <laughs> put up with that type of talk. Because really, it is, uh, for a coach, I don't know any coach that ever had that as a goal or a thought of it. And uh, But when it was getting close, it's too much attention, and you, you want the players to have the attention. But then, Eddie Fogler was an assistant, and Roy Williams and Bill Guthridge. And, well, then, now, Roy had already gone. But Eddie kept calling in. He said, "The players say you got to stay long enough to do this uh, for for them." And all of a sudden, that made sense to me because that's what uh, if the players they can be pleasing that their school did this. Then why not? In fact, Roy Williams has said, at the time at least, it was much more important to the assistant coaches than it was to Coach Smith. Stevenson fighting on the offensive end. Miller comes up with the loose ball. That may change now if you're Dean Smith looking back on that. But at the time, it was Bill Guthrie and Eddie Fogler and Roy Williams who really wanted him to stick around and, and break the record. Well, they wanted him to stick around and break the record because each of those guys had such a strong tie to this university. You know, it would be different if they were kind of nomads and had gone from program to program. But Eddie Fogler, player here under Dean Smith, you know, obviously Roy Williams, here under Dean Smith. Bottom line is they have such a connection to Carolina that it was almost bigger than Dean Smith himself. Second foul on Adrian Hill. Rutgers can ill afford to have anyone get in foul trouble. They're shorthanded anyway in this game. Ginyard goes to the bench. Stevenson who did a nice job and Thompson. 
Well, if you look at this game, Terry, I mean, Rutgers, they're getting shots now. They're 3 of 12 from the field. They just aren't able to finish. Their last field goal was at 14.47, so that's almost four minutes ago. And they've turned the ball over five times. And three of those five turnovers have been steals, which are open floor opportunities, giving Carolina a chance to fast break in, in transition. So, I mean, Rutgers can't argue with the game plan. It's just all about the execution. Over the course of the entire game, though, if you're Webb, if you're Courtney Nelson, you're going to be worn out trying to handle this pressure and really pounding the basketball a lot out front because you're trying to take time off the clock. Well, you're going to be worn out, but you got no place to go. This is the only game in town right now, so you give everything you have and you worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Nelson, the air ball, but tipped out by Terry, and it will stay at this end. Rutgers with five seconds on the shot clock. And I suspect coming into this arena, playing this team, you know, the adrenaline's flowing. You're probably not going to feel the fatigue. Maybe not with 10.02 left in the first half. 10.02 left in the second stanza. It might be a different story. Yeah, but you, if you're in the game, you're not feeling it. You know that. Deron Griffin, the sophomore from Manchester, New Jersey, with his fourth. And it's a five-point game. Right now, again, Rutgers staying close. Terry held around that screen that caught Griffin, who pleads his case, but he did it. So Dron hits one at the other end, picks up the foul at this end. And with Carolina, you just have to remain patient. You know you've got the depth. You know you have the talent. It's just a question of some of these shots going down. It's a question of, you know, getting some opportunities that maybe break the spirit of Rutgers. Some open floor transition, maybe a terrific dunk, something that's going to have Rutgers hanging their heads. Instead, they go out here and they turn it over with an illegal pick. Terry called for the screen. Rayshawn's first, the senior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. As Lawson came back in for Wes Miller. So now the freshman comes back in for the senior Miller. And there will be plenty of opportunities such as this one throughout the game where Rutgers has a critical possession. You know, they've got a score right now to maintain, you know, at least striking distance. They spread it again. Griffin loses it. And through the hands of Ali Bailey, the junior from Chicago, off the bench for Fred Hill. Six turnover, giving it back to the Tar Heels with 9.30 left. Saw the graphic a moment ago with the freshman class and what they've put up numbers-wise. And this man right here, Brendan Wright, the one guy who they really needed to step up. So they say he's played maybe better than the other freshmen, but they needed him to. They had some depth at the other positions. Hands bro with the walking violation. Well, yeah, I mentioned it before. Brandon Wright was somewhat of a surprise. He's averaging 25 minutes a game, but scoring 15 points, six rebounds. Has been in double figures all 11 games this season. And he has just been one of those guys, three-time ACC Rookie of the Week, just one of those guys that have found a system where he can thrive. Mr. Basketball in the state of Tennessee in high school. Shot clock under 15 now as they run it down, get the shot from the corner. A little bit strong for Webb. He's got to hit those if they're going to stay in the game. Lawson quickly over to Ellington. The hustle by Rutgers to come up with it. And Webb finds his point guard, Nelson. Carolina a bit careless right now. That's a couple of possessions that, you know, they really, three possessions in a row now, they really haven't gotten a good look at the basket. Hansbro turns it over. Prior to that, Terry turned it over the illegal screen. And now here's another turnover. Yeah, five turnovers in the game. Webb. Almost turns it over at the other end. Knocked out with 15 on the shot clock. You know, you recognize, again, that Rutgers a wounded team, even though they came in here winning five consecutive games, but without two of their key guys. Carolina players probably sense that. And maybe they've got a little bit of a letdown. Maybe think they think this is going to be easy night. But obviously Rutgers... Very prideful, very competitive. Listen, oh, man. way off. That wasn't part of the plan. Lawson stops in the lane. Terry spots up for the three. Uh -uh. Goes over the backboard and back to Rutgers. No matter how much you talk about it as a coach, it's tough to get, especially the youngsters like Wright, Ellington, and Lawson, to say, all right, we're playing Rutgers six and five, but we've got to get up just like we're playing the number one team in the nation. That's probable, but again, when you have the depth that Carolina has, the yeah, best way matter. to get through to them, sit them down. Yeah, true. You know what? You're right. And Bob Knight once said that, as a matter of fact, the, the best 
motivational factor is the relationship between body and bench. <laughs> he, he said a little more colorful than I just did, but, but it's true. As a player, you can get yelled at all night, but if you get taken out of the game, that's the worst. Three-point game, by the way, here. Great look, right foul. But the dish by Lawson, so Randon Wright will go to the free throw line when we come back, but the lead down to three here for the Heels. So long. And it's an odd coupling, but those two have gotten to be very good friends over the years. Len. History in the making, perhaps, after we are done. Texas Tech, UNLV, and uh, New Mexico next on the schedule. I'm sure Bob Knight would like to get it out of the way here, though, and he's also talked about it, much like Dean Smith when he was on the verge of breaking Adolph Rupp's record. Concentrate on the kids, on the next game, keep it all in perspective. But it is a, a major, obviously, story in sports right now. And believe it or not, I think Bob Knight is kind of uncomfortable in that spotlight. You know, he wants to, as you mentioned, focus it back on, on his players and focus it back on his program. But, you know, this is a guy that has done so much. I'm talking about Bob Knight in the city of Lubbock. They call him their, their greatest ambassador. And he's a guy who's also done so many things that a lot of people don't speak of. But in the end, he's not asking for the publicity. And you mentioned the odd couple with, with Jerry Tarkanian. Absolutely. Tarkanian, not to pass any judgment, but to many people, Tark stands for a different way of recruiting and going about, you know, running a program, something that's been the antithesis of Bob Knight and his program. On the line, over and back. Backboard violation. Seventh turnover for... Rutgers and the lead at four for the Heels. Fred Hill, who uh, is a legacy in some ways, and the Scarlet Knights has been a longtime baseball coach at Rutgers. But he spent four years as an assistant at Villanova, came over as an assistant last year, and now has gotten a head job. Good look down low to Brandon Wright, who gets it up on the glass quickly. He's got seven in the game. So, Len, at the seven-minute mark, it's a six-point game, and Carolina's got 19 points. They average 90. Right, and that's obvious that Rutgers is accomplishing what they wanted to now. Carolina's been a little complicit in that by turning the ball over and really not showing the kind of focus they need to to put a team away. Bailey down low, blocked by Wright, which starts the break. 16 of the 19 points have been scored by Carolina freshman. Wright looks to add to that. Can't. High into the air is Enjai. And that's one of the ways, again, that you try to limit Carolina's opportunities. Give them one shot and out. And if you got a guy like Enjai who can command the boards, you're going to have some pretty decent luck staying in this ballgame. Green almost stole it, but knocked it out. So it stays at the Rutgers and Adrian Hill. Back in for Ali Bailey, who gave him some good minutes. Well, we talk about, again, being able to just work together. Look at the screen across, and a nice job there by Wright to read that screen, come off at the appropriate time. And that's what Carolina has to do. That's called execution. And that's really just about concentration. Ripping one for six. Got to get it going if they're going to stay in it. Tipped out, North Carolina basketball. Shale Keating, a senior from Teaneck, New Jersey, in off the bench for Fred Hill. So you talk about time and score. Here's the time where Carolina, although they like to run it up and down in a half-court situation, need to take their time a little bit. Ellington didn't hear you. In and out. Hansbrough, the offensive rebound. He gets the bucket the hard way. First bucket of the game for Tyler Hansbrough, but the largest lead of the game for the Heels. And it was a second-chance opportunity to got Hansbrough that bucket, but also got Carolina what I would consider a reasonably big bucket for them at this point in time. There have, been, by eight. there have been games when he has seemed to disappear. Hansbrough, Gonzaga for one, but maybe in large part due to what Gonzaga did to him. Are they doing Absolutely. anything different here? No, right here I think Hansbrough is forced outside a little bit. He's been taking some jump shots from the free throw line, not really getting the ball in the paint. Tipped out, heels basketball. Keating, good anticipation, couldn't control it. But again, when you're not shooting the ball well from the field you got to work to get these kind of work pail buckets you know the easy ones two footers and when you start making one or two of those as you know all of a sudden now your shot starts to come back because you're not thinking about it you're not thinking i'm 0 for 4 0 for 5 i've got a couple in the bank 
as opposed to just going to different aspects, either get passing or trying to be a defensive player or whatnot. If you're a shooter, for example, if you're a scorer, you're out there to score. Wild shot by the right hands, bro. Another offensive rebound, but Griffin with the loose ball. And I would say that when you look at Tyler Hansbrough, he's the leading rebounder in this team. He's out there to rebound. He's out there to score. He's out there to take up space. Yeah, right. That's right. Rutgers 5 of 20 in the game, and yet they're still in it. It's an eight-point game. Webb works baseline. Double team. Hill oh. to the glass. Adrian Hill, the senior from Canton, Ohio, with his fourth. Well, Adrian Hill came into this game averaging 10 points in his last two games. His last game was a double-double against Lehigh. You know, he's been plagued by knee problems throughout his career. He's a fifth-year senior, but you see the explosiveness. Lawson and one. Keenan followed him on the way. And I spoke of the explosiveness right here, and it's just a nice job of just attacking. He saw it a little bit in the lane, recognized that he's a high riser. A little emphasis. He missed an entire season due to a knee injury, then missed the second half of the next season. So if he can do that on a knee that's been through the ringer. I want to see his doctor. I know. Take care of those knees. There's Roy doing some teaching on the sideline. Wes Miller in for Lawson. And the lead is up to nine now for the Heels. Roy. Over 500 wins in his career, and the quickest to that number in terms of seasons than anyone else. However, you know, they're already starting to talk about, all right, so Bob Knight gets the record. Who's going to eventually pass Bob Knight? And with over 500 wins, Roy Williams would be one of those who come to mind. But he got a late start because of all the years on the bench as an assistant. Double team out front, Webb. But the numbers now. Webb high into the air. The senior from Patterson, New Jersey, makes it a seven-point game. The Rutgers, despite their problems in handling the ball, despite their problems in putting the ball in the basket, seem to hit shots just to stay close within striking distance under double digits. Stevenson, nice jump hook over Enjai, who's a shot blocker. Well, I like Alex Stevenson. Again, showing me fundamental soundness down low. Nothing fancy. Just does a nice job of staying within his range and getting the ball up there using the glass. That's six in the game. Nelson the spin. Wild with the shot. Here comes Miller leading the break. Finds Terry. Crossover. Thompson, another guy like Stevenson who could be a sleeper. Doesn't get all the attention as a freshman. The other guys do who are starting. But uh, you look a couple years down the road, Deion Thompson and Alex Stevenson, pretty good futures. And you know what? You talk about the potential of Tyler Hansbrough, Brandon Wright. But Stevenson and Thompson will be the guys that might stick around to their seniors. And second violation, a turnover. What are your thoughts? And who might eventually pass Coach Knight, even though it's way too early for that. When do we come back? All right, Fred, thank you very much here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina with the 26 to 17 lead over Rutgers. Rutgers with a big football game tonight as well. The Texas Bowl against Kansas State trying to win the first bowl game. Third bowl game uh, that they're participating in in the long history of the program. Haven't got the win yet. Had a great year, though, this season, the regular season. Off the glass, Deion Thompson, the freshman from Torrance, California, the eighth different player to score for the Heels tonight. Hill, off balance, Njai got it. Boy, what an athlete Hamadi Njai is. That was from a standstill, and he didn't even crouch to dunk that ball. You know, his length, his explosiveness, and he's a project just really starting to learn how to play this game. From Senegal, went to Stone Ridge Prep out in California, but you certainly see what Fred Hill has to work with. The offensive foul, that's the second time we've seen Rayshon Terry do that. That's his second foul overall. In terms of the active win leaders, Lute Olsen, Mike Krzyzewski, of course, Calhoun, Bayheim behind Knight. But Bobby Knight, who knows, he might go 10 more years. Well, he might. And, you know, you're looking at a 1,000 wins. 
And this is one of the guys, I think, if you consider Roy Williams at, what is he, 56 right now? Mm -hmm. If he averages 25 wins in the next 20 years, you know, he will probably be pushing Bob Knight, assuming Bob Knight sticks around. Dep yeah, exactly. And, and, and Bob talking Knight about signed. A thousand wins. Through what, 2010, 2011. Of course, he can stay or not stay through that, but he is signed through that point. No sign that he's leaving anytime soon. And that's the guy that I would say Roy Williams might be the guy that stays in this program and has this kind of success. He might be the guy that could count. Hill has it blocked by Wright. Here come the heels. Contact. Lawson will go to the line on the blocking foul. And you're also assuming 25 wins a season, which they'll probably get, but that's a lot of wins. Reminder, more uh, color tubes coming your way, ESPN2. Georgetown taking on Michigan, and then you've got UConn undefeated. Number nine taking on West Virginia. Tough place to play, though, on ESPN2. Two o'clock Saturday. You'll be there. They'll be tested in that one. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they destroyed Coppin State, but Coppin State is kind of indicative of, of Connecticut's schedule this year. And they're 11-0 and right now. You take a look. They're one of the four remaining undefeated team. West Virginia is a tough place to play. And if the students stick around or if they come back for this, it'll make it even tougher. Connecticut, a young team. First road game, kind of reminiscent of a couple years ago when they had a reasonably young team. Mm -hmm. Very highly ranked, went into Marquette. Marquette's first year in the conference, and Connecticut got spanked. So this will be a test for Jim Calhoun's young UConn Huskies. But I'll tell you what, they are talented, no question about it. Forget to play at. West Virginia is a tough place to get to. You're <laughs> worn out by the time you get there. But once you get there, you're happy. Not, you know, it's one of those things, a mountaineer environment. Lawson, not an easy shot. On the break to stop inside the lane. Not enough point guards do that. But Lawson gets it, and it's 31 to 19. All of a sudden, it looks like a very large lead for the heel. Well, again, they got over that hump and got a double-digit lead. And from a mental standpoint, Rutgers had to look up there at that scoreboard and probably had some trepidation. And look at this right here. Again, fumbling and stumbling. As they spread the floor, Griffin goes one-on-one -on -one for about 15 seconds. Heels running again. Ellington lost it. Crowd here ready to explode. And they'll walk it up. And there's a fraction of a second difference between, actually they turned the shot clock off. And Rutgers would be smart to hold this for the last one. Well, thought about it. Now he's going to go ahead and press the issue. No call. He expected to foul, so the heels with a chance to end it. Not Why, a good decision. Right. Why would they give Carolina another chance to score? And they'll do just that. Hands go with the follow. That's how he got his first bucket. And that's the way we'll end the first half. Largest lead for the heels here at the half. Right leading the way for the freshman. 26 of the 33 points for the heels. 33-19. As we send you back to the studio right now, Fred Hickman, for our halftime report. All right, Terry Hannon. The Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Rutgers coming in shorthanded. Two of their starters out due to a violation of academic policy. The Heels taking advantage in the last couple of minutes in the first half. So the fans might be what they see here at the place named after Dean Smith. A 14-point lead for the number two team in the nation. Terry Gannon back with Len Elmore. For much of the first half, Len, Rutgers able to control the tempo, as you said they had to, but the nine turnovers really cost them shooting less than 30%, too. Well, absolutely. If you can't put the ball in the basket, it doesn't matter how much tempo you control. You know, Carolina obviously playing into Rutgers' hands with turnovers of their own, but in the last couple of minutes of the first half, Carolina got back to basics, got the ball inside, and their big guys really got the job done. In the paint, they did a lot of damage in the first half, but uh, you look at that spurt at the end, four and a half minutes to go in the half, it was 21 to 15. Now it's 33 to 19. Tyler Hansbro, just a couple of buckets in the first half, both of them off of offensive rebounds and the heels doing the job on the glass 21 16 Rutgers ball to start the second half six and five the Scarlet Knights have won five games in a row the heels seven in a row 
Well, we talked about it in the first half. You see Carolina with the double team trying to continue to exert the pressure. You know, this is a team, Rutgers, that only averages 62 points a game. So when you go down this much, it's almost insurmountable since you don't have enough firepower, really, to try to come back. Carolina would have to have a total meltdown to allow Rutgers back in this ball game. to be honest. And you look at the numbers right here. Significantly, look, we talked about shooting under 30%. One assist for Rutgers. That means that they're forced to try to take people off the bounce one-on-one. -on -one. Not a lot of ball movement. They don't get a lot of assists anyway. Only average 10 per game. On Griffin with two misses to start See? the second half. He's one for 10. There's Hill who missed an easy one. I mean, that was a nice move as well, but you've got to be able to finish those. Hill would have been better served dunking the ball as he did in the first half with a spectacular one. Hansbro sets it up with Lawson, the freshman running the point and doing a very good job the last seven games now. Three straight games with eight assists or more. A little strong for Hansbro, his right. And again, he's forced to step outside and shoot the ball from the free throw line. Tyler Hansbro did his damage all last year, a superlative a year that he had. He did most of his damage from in the paint. Rarely did he step outside to shoot that jumper. He's probably had to do it more because Brandon Wright has occupied a lot of room and done it very effectively down low. 2.6 rebounds for Hansbro, who comes off that game against St. Louis where he had over 2,000 people from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, and gets his another bucket. He's got, uh, well, six in the game now. Sometimes it's hard to do those, uh, to play those games. A homecoming game, he goes back to the St. Louis area and has all those people from his hometown there, a lot of pressure on him. Enjai off the dish from Hill. Well, that was a nice job by Hill. First to gather the ball in a crowd, and then to have the presence of mind to find his teammate down low. Looking to Hansbro in the opening moments of the second half. Hill clears it. Well, Enjai and Hill doing a nice job on Hansbro. Hansbro's trying to step outside and create some room and get some looks, but when he's down low, he's got some long arms thwarting his offensive opportunity. Rutgers, too, here in the opening moments of the second half, not running that spread offense. They're looking for one-on-one. -on -one. They're running their regular offense. The follow away down low against Enjai. Well, you look at the freshman contribution here, and this is what we talked about in the first half, how a lot of the guys who played significant minutes last year for Carolina have had to take a step back, give up some of their minutes to these freshmen who are just playing tremendous. And you look at the balance as well. That's what I talked about. Carolina seemingly running downhill with the balance, with the youth, making their impact felt. And again, they look to hands grow inside. You know that Roy Williams must have mentioned that halftime. we got to get it to our big fellow. He's got eight. And you saw him go to his trademark move, the little jump hook with the right hand. Does such a nice job of getting defenders locked with his left arm and freezing him. And he gets that right hand up there and gets the shot in easily. Right swats it away. 22 on the shot clock now for Rutgers. And, and the heels coming out in that run and jump or trapping defense. And this is what they force. They force the guards to have to drive in to that tall timber. And opponents have faced that for many years when they've come to Chapel Hill. Dean Smith uh, is certainly the architect of many different defensive looks. Boy, Williams told me before the game, hey, I haven't invented anything. I learned under a guy who invented a lot in terms of the game of basketball. Griffin, another miss. Unjai, the offensive rebound. Hill. Dunk it. Well, that's what he should have done on that last drive that he missed on the layup. And Carolina right back at you, maybe a little too fast. But, Terry, to go back to your point about Dean Smith, the innovator, you know, that's the kind of the juxtaposition, I think, the comparison between Smith and Knight. Dean Smith, creative, intricate, applied a lot of different ways of pressure. Bob Knight keeps it simple. Man D, motion offense, and nothing in between. Mm -hmm. Purest form, maybe, of basketball. you got to learn that before you can play all those other defenses, or at least play them well. One legend looking to pass another. Bob Knight on the brink of history tonight. Texas Tech and UNLV is at 879, looking for 880. They're coming up next from Lubbock on Monday. He's got New Mexico on ESPN2 as well. Wes Miller in off the bench. Gives it off to Ellington. The freshman high into the air with a three from the top of the key. He's got eight in the game. And Wayne Ellington, co-player of the year. 
in Philadelphia Catholic School League or Philadelphia Private School League, along with Gerald Henderson, who plays at Duke right now. And Wayne Ellington, you look at his numbers and look at his impact, probably having a little bit more impact than Gerald Henderson at this point in time. Nelson down low to Hill, who's got another dunk. Lenny just keeps doing that over and over. And, and he's doing it with the braces on his knee. I mean, if you look at that one brace on his left knee, we talked about the problems he's had. I'm surprised he's even out there, let alone being as explosive as he is. Frank Russell with his third foul. As he bodied up against Tyler Hansbrough. Well, you look at the dunk right there, just explosive by Adrian Hill. The lead is 15 for North Carolina, the number two team in the nation here at home against Rutgers. And been talking about Dean Smith, Bob Knight all night long. These are the five games where they went head to head. The 81 game, the national championship game, 84 also in the NCAA tournament. Well, Dean Smith leads three to two and head to head. But the two that count are the ones in March, you know, particularly since they're not in the same conference. So, you know, I don't know if you can exactly say that Dean Smith won that battle, <laughs> won those battles. 81 is the uh, night President Reagan was shot in 84. That game known as the Dan Dockich game <laughs> in terms of basketball fans at least. Dan Dockich guarding Michael Jordan for a good portion of that game and holding him I think to 13. I think that's what Michael had that game. Might be wrong on the number but he held him. Webb crowd wanted a walk. If I'm Rutgers, I'm going to start to start look for my guys inside even more frequently, recognizing that between Hill and Enjai, although Hill's not in the ball game, actually Enjai's not in the ball game right now, that those guys have had some success in the paint. Nelson will go to the free throw line after a nice drive. Saturday, double dose of college hoops on ESPN2. Georgetown traveling to Ann Arbor to take on Michigan. Then at two, undefeated number nine, UConn, taking on Big East rival West Virginia. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. UConn moving to 11 and 0 last night, beating Coppin State. In, out, in, back out again for Nelson. Boy, Courtney Nelson having all sorts of difficulty. You know, he's counted on the score, 0 for 6 from the field. You know, he's a transfer from Richmond, averaged seven points a game his freshman year, set out last year because of the transfer rule, and Rutgers really looking for him to generate some offense. And this is his start and an opportunity for him. He just hasn't had the benefit of some luck. Off the heel in Ellington. Clears it, starts the break. Well, they turn from defense to offense very quickly. Ellington gets it back from Miller. That's another three. He's got 11 in the game. Well, Ellington came into this game 38% shooter from beyond the arc. Twenty-point lead for the Heels. They work around the screen. Hansbro called for the foul on Russell. Well, you look down here in transition, and this is what you don't want if you're defending Carolina, because they can not only have guys who can run the floor athletically, but spot up shooters like Wayne Ellington. And boy, you talk about being able to stretch the floor and spread the defense. When you have a shooter like that on the floor, you always have to know where he is. And I know Miller hasn't shot it well this year, but you've got Ellington giving it up to Miller. Back to Ellington. Take your pick. I mean, you can't guard both of them if you've got one guy there, and both can knock down the three. Knocked out, stays here with the Scarlet Knights. And again, 25 total points for Rutgers right now. We talked about the problems that they would have scoring, and particularly with two of their key guys on the bench. Again, J.R. Inman and Anthony Farmer on the bench, suspended for one game for violation of academic policy, team academic policy. Thompson with the steal. Miller over to Ellington, works around the screen. So Rutgers severely short-handed. Nice little two-man game. Deion Thompson, the freshman from Torrance, California, with his fourth point. Largest lead, 47-25. The crowd on their feet here in the Smith Center. Who cried? I did. 
dead. Not me. It was a sad ending and everything. I just I saw you with your that. hand in your chin. That's called. 22 point lead for the Heels here at home. Been talking about Dean Smith. He passed Adolph Rupp to top the all time wins list in 97 in the NCAA tournament against Colorado. We asked him about that game. I was embarrassed there from the standpoint, you know, gosh, Perkins and Carl, you know, they're there and they're supposed to be playing that night or something. And, uh, and of course, Mitch Kupchak came in and I can't name them all. They, and then afterwards, they all got it in the hallway and that was even more, uh, I couldn't believe they all came to the game where they got the tickets. I didn't have that many tickets, but they got in. And no, we, it's really, uh, I'm so lucky to have had the, this job at Carolina and the people that came, and we still stay. And I get goosebumps talking about them. And the program, obviously, that uh, goes on and on, run down by Roy Williams, but even go back before Dean Smith and Frank McGuire building it uh, here on Tobacco Road. And reloading every year, Land, with the freshman. Some of the best in the country this year, including that man, Wayne Ellington, another three. He's got 14. Well, again, the greatest legacy in my mind that a coach can leave is the loyalty of the guys who played for him. And when you talk about two guys, Dean Smith and Bob Knight, you know, it's almost unanimous of every guy that's played for those guys, the loyalty, the esteem that they, each of those guys have from their players. And, and that, to me, is a measure of the type of teacher and the type of figure that those guys were in the lives of their players. And it does go both ways, player to coach, coach to player. And if in the end you walk away with that lesson, that's hard to beat no matter what happens on the floor. Miller knocks down the long range jumper. It's 53-25 coming from everywhere now for the heels. He hits one, Ellington's four for four beyond the arc. Some of the stuff that you just saw, Roy Williams, the type of teaching, hands-on, that's what engenders that loyalty. Hill can't get the roll, but he'll go to the free throw line. Speaking of uh, the legacy, here's Bob Knight, the coaching tree. Look at the names on this list. Obviously, Mike Krzyzewski, another Hall of Famer, tops the list. Well, again, you talk about guys who understand this game and try to teach it the right way. And even Isaiah Thomas has you know, undergone some controversies of his own in New York City. You know, it's turned out to be a, a pretty decent teacher as a coach, a great basketball player. And it's always hard when you have great basketball players. They're not always great teachers. And it seems as though the Knicks are trying to right the ship. Triple overtime win last night against the Detroit Pistons. A lot of young players on that team. And, you know, Isaiah's leg Isaiah Thomas' legacy is in front of him as to whether or not he can be a quality coach, kind of in the mold of a Bob Knight on that level. Yep. And by the way, those are the active names. There are a number of others we could put up there. But uh, those are the names who are coaching right now. Yeah, there's a lot of guys we could put up there. We didn't have enough room on that page. <laughs> Well, the influence that both Dean Smith and Bob Knight have had on the game, you can't measure it, especially in terms of the coaching ranks and the people who have learned and gone on. And even, you know, you read stories uh, about the, the weaving through and the relationships that end up uh, having influence on other conferences, too. Bob Knight on the ACC. But Barry Jacobs, a uh, well-known writer, a figure here in the ACC with a good article uh, today about just that. Ginyard loses it, gets it back. And get, get another possession. Yeah, Barry's article was a terrific one in tying the relationships between Dean Smith, Bob Knight, ACC. Kind of a Kevin Bacon six degrees of Bob Knight. <laughs> Danny Green knocks down the three. Everybody's getting into the act. And it was a matter of time. You knew the avalanche was coming. Again, Rutgers severely shorthanded, valiantly tried to stay into this ball game, did a nice job of controlling tempo in the first half, but it's just gotten away from them now. Because of that, in part, they've had some good chances. Bailey missed the easy one. It's contested, but one that he would expect to make. Lawson off with the long-range shot. Junior will go to the line. The foul on Courtney Nelson. That's his second. 56-28 for Roy Williams Club.
All right, Fred, thank you very much. North Carolina threatening to run away with this one. And Bob Knight, uh, look at some of the numbers on him. Youngest head coach at 24 years of age at Army back in the mid-60s. And the 76 team, one of the greatest teams of all time. And I'll tell you what, that accomplishment, you know, going undefeated, having the perfect season. I'm just not sure with the parity of basketball today and the amount of talent out there that's so dispersed that that can never happen again. Scholarships different today, number of scholarships, but uh, but maybe at that point, it's when TV really started to explode and everyone started to be on TV, not just the top four or five programs. Right, and then that's why the disbursement of talent is so widespread because mm -hmm. we've got so many teams on TV and young people want to come in and play right away and be seen on television right away. In yard misses the second after getting his first point of the night. Ten different players getting into the act for the Heels. Again, at the beginning of the telecast, we talked about Carolina's depth and their balance and the impact of the freshmen. And this is a, a great example right here. It took them a while to get started. Keating looking for an outlet. It's Bailey who doesn't really want it that far from the hoop. Shot clock under five. One on one with Lawson. A floater, no good. Bailey, the offensive glass. And one. Well, that was sheer determination right there by Ollie Bailey. And that's the type of determination, again, that Fred Hill has to try to pull out of his players right now, recognizing this is a pretty lost cause. But you look, they'll continue to battle now. Things aren't going well, but you got to give the Rutgers big men, uh, exam exemplified by Ollie Bailey, you give them some credit to continue to battle the boards, continue to fight. This is about pride right now, as far as Fred Hill is concerned. This is about teaching. This is one of the toughest jobs a coach can have. It's easy when you're up by 30. This is when it's difficult as far as a teacher is concerned. And don't you feel like the, the greatest part of teaching is done during games? I mean, I know you can prepare and practice and do all you do to make a player better, get him better through his two, three, four years at a university, but teaching the game of basketball it has more impact when you can do it during the game. Well, it's the mental approach. It's developing the passion for the game. It's developing the perseverance and character that occurs in the heat of battle, so to speak. Second foul on Jerron Griffin. You look at the, what he's done. Longtime assistant coach. And he was at Marquette and Seton Hall at Villanova, we mentioned. And last year as the associate head coach at Rutgers before taking over this year. And you, when he talks about the program, it is a genuine sense of pride from which all of his enthusiasm and excitement come. He's a, he's a Jersey guy. I mean, this is his dream job. Oh, it certainly is. And again, he's one of those guys, when you look at the places he's been, they've gone to the tournament. They've had some success, and he's played a vital role in that from recruiting to strategy. Austin runs it down. It was tipped, so it's not over and back. Races it up to Ginyard. He leads it for right, and an easy dunk. He's got nine in the game. And you talk about pride. On one hand, you can see Rutgers tired. But how about the Carolina guys? Everybody ran at least a half court as the Carolina guys chased that ball down. And then they turned around and beat Rutgers back down the floor. So again, just because they're winning by a significant amount of points doesn't mean that they're going to just go on cruise, on cruise control. Look at the hustle right there. And then look at the push. Everybody's running back. Just beats the big men from Rutgers down. So on one hand, you talk about the pride that, that was shown by the offensive rebounding by Rutgers. On the other hand, though, Roy Williams has got everybody hungry on that team. Second, five-second violation of the game. Gives it back to the heels. Miller just knocked one down from that spot. This is this time. Webb. Leaves it for Griffin, not going to miss that one. He's had a tough night from the floor, Gerard Griffin, but the dunk makes it a 59-33 game. And throw, 15-footer strong. Right, snared it. Well, you talk about tremendous upside for Brandon Wright. And we've talked about his many skills, but just the physical capability, the length, the leaping ability. And, of course, the desire. When you offensive rebound, as far as I'm concerned, that's all about desire. That's how you measure a rebounder. 
Now, you're in position already at the defensive end. Takes a greater effort to get there on the offensive glass. And on cue, Wright grabs another one and is fouled. And Dean Smith, those who are active, that got their start from uh, from Coach Smith. And let us explain, Mitch Kupchak, not really a coach. You know, he's the president of basketball operations for Los Angeles Lakers, so he's the coach's boss, so to speak. That's right, even higher up. Uh, Although I'm way. not so sure he can fire Phil Jackson. What do you think? Are you can start a controversy here? Do you want <laughs> Phil fired? Is no, I'm just, I'm just talking about chain of command. And Larry Brown got there, too. Because of, and there is... The jersey, Billy Cunningham, boy, just the, the names when you walk in, you look up there. Uh, pretty impressive. Three more going up, too, as we said. Felton, May, Pants. You saw next to Larry Brown's jersey to the left was Doug Moe, longtime coach of the Denver Nuggets. They had some great success with the running game. Produced two high scorers, one Hall of Famer in Alex English. And I'm sure he learned from Coach Smith as well. Yep. That's where he instituted that running game, as we see here, Carolina employing it with great efficiency. Miller almost took it away with Webb knife down the lane, knocked out by Bailey. So it's North Carolina basketball. 8.42 left here in Chapel Hill at the Smith Center as the number two team in the nation is on top 63 to 35. Pretty tight game until about the four minute mark of the first half. This setting the table for little history perhaps. Texas Tech taking on UNLV. Bob Knight looking for win number 808. The Rutgers looking to maybe shake Carolina up a little bit, change up on them, and also maybe rest their guys going to that 1-3-1 half-court pressure. Doesn't matter, though. As far out as you want to go, that's how far out Wayne Ellington will step and still bury the three. 17 in the game. He's 5 of 6 from beyond the three-point line. And there's the trap. Good job to break it, and the dish finished by Frank Russell. And right there, I was just going to say before Russell finally did it, these are opportunities to learn how to go back door against pressure. Right faces this time. Jump hook, sweet in the lane. Is there something he doesn't have in the post? I mean, he's shown you left hand, right hand, showing you offensive rebound capability, the ability to post up. Some people may say he doesn't have much range, but if you can score from five feet from the basket, why not? They say well, all he does is turn down on the block and make the shot. Well, what else is there? The foul down low. Hill will go to the free throw line when we come back. Carolina on top big. All right, guys, thank you. 722 left in this one. Carolina with the 68-37 lead. The career file on Bob Knight. Got a start, of course, at Army. 102 wins there. And then uh, Indiana. Now Texas Tech. And, you know, everyone's speculating, and we saw the piece earlier on, on what may have happened had Bob Knight stayed at Indiana. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, in the end, one of the problems Bob Knight had was he was winning games, but Again, when you get to the tournament, he was getting bounced out in the first round, maybe sometimes make it to the second round. Uh, from a recruiting standpoint, wasn't always getting the best players in his, in his particular region. And there are times when, you know, you just stay someplace too long. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And some of the other aspects of his tenure there outside of the game of basketball started to leak into the game of basketball and may have affected the program in general. So overall, we can speculate all we want. The bottom line is we are where we are right now. He's on the brink of history as the winningest coach in Division I basketball and can't say any more than that. But the, the less publicized aspects of the off-the-court things, and you touched on it earlier, for example, what he did for the Indiana Library, what he's done now for the Library of Texas Tech with a huge donation and a donation of a lot of books, his own books, right. actually, uh, as well as the money. There's a lot of things on campus and in that city that has brought a lot of attention and good work. So much for the lack of range by Brandon yeah, Wright. <laughs> You're right. Wright stepping out. He's got 17. You know, the left hand has shot that jumper with some ease. And you look again at the freshman scoring. 
And these guys are just going to get better as this season wears on. Well, I'll tell you, you talk about the, the charitable, philanthropic, humanitarian stuff that Bob Knight has done. He's never really asked for the attention. You know, he's done it without a great deal of fanfare unless the fanfare found him. And for that, we give him credit. So there's been a balance there between the controversy and the quality things that he's done as an individual. Sean Terry's been quiet. He's only got three, but nice little stop. And the wing jump shot off the dish from Ty Lawson. Been impressive, even with Rutgers being shorthanded. If you were not with us in the first half of the start of the game, as Griffin goes up and another dunk. It's at least four tonight by Adrian Hill. He's got 13 points. And again, on that left knee is a brace that I'm sure weighs probably more than it should, and it looks so cumbersome, but he just rises with such ease. And, you know, therein lies the hope of this program, if you can get another Adrian Hill. I mean, again, a fifth-year mm -hmm. senior, he's gone after this season. But that type of athleticism, combined with some experience in the backcourt, means some good things for Rutgers coming forward. Griffin in and out. Terry couldn't control it. And the walking violation keeps it at the Rutgers end. At a 5-10, you don't expect Ty Lawson to be rejecting any shots. But everything going right for Carolina. And Fred Hill. Actually, I cheated Ty Lawson. 5'11". Yeah, 5 11. I, I was going to say, you take away an inch, and when you're 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 I mean, you're trying to stretch it to six foot. I'm just going. I'm just going by what my eyes tell me. You got it without shoes and socks. But Fred Hill has already signed four players for next year, including a kid named Corey Chandler from Newark, who really is a top 50 player and very much. He was telling us in in the mold of a Randy Foy, who he recruited when he was at Villanova. While we have a moment, Fred does some teaching. A reminder. Yeah, we got a 30-second timeout here first. So uh, we'll tell you about the college hoops coming your way Saturday in just a moment. More, though, we continue the, uh, the Dean Smith, Bob Knight comparisons. We asked Dean Smith to talk about those comparisons. When Bob and I were with Michael, he first retired, and that's when this is in the new Arena United Center, and, uh, and they asked him something to compare uh, playing for Coach Smith and his, that five weeks or six weeks Coach Knight. He said really a lot of similarities and except the language. And Bob loved that idea. Yeah, and Michael actually said, uh, yep, Coach Smith, the king of the four corners offense, Coach Knight, the king of the four-letter word. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. As you take a look at just a small smattering of Michael Jordan's career accomplishments, arguably the greatest player in the game of basketball. Not so much on the college level because he didn't stay long enough to have the impact. Obviously, he's recognized here and by the Carolina community. Having said that, though, people tend to forget, as we just saw in the graphic, that he was the national player of the year. They always focus on the fact that he wasn't the Michael Jordan that we came to know with the Bulls. But maybe part of that due to the system. And when he came to North Carolina, he wasn't the, the state player of the year. Buzz Peterson was in North Carolina, who he eventually roomed with here in Chapel Hill. His very good friend, Buzz, now coaching. You know, he got better and better within that Dean Smith system. Well, yeah, I mean, it was comparative that I was mentioning. There's no, no doubt. question no. about the fact that he was a, a great player in the college level, but imagine what he would have been had he stayed four years. Yep. And so, and the foul on Enjai. And physically, too. I think Michael Jordan just did that much bigger physically as he got to the NBA. And speaking of physical, again, Hansbro with a little turnaround jump hook. Uses that left hand to lock the defender. And just a soft touch going to the basket. That's his go-to move and something that people can expect. You can scout. You can prepare for. And still not be able to stop it. 
leading, and there's another one. Closely guarded. Lawson's done that three times tonight to a couple of different Rutgers point guards. Started to tell you a moment ago about the double dose, college hoops. Coming your way, Georgetown, Michigan on ESPN2. That's at noon Eastern Saturday. Then UConn taking on Big East rival West Virginia. And round and out, fights to get it back. And ties up Hill. We'll go over and say, uh, hey, no harm done. So it stays here, possession arrow with the heel. How about the point guard play tonight, Len? Lawson and Miller. Lawson's got eight assists, no turnovers. Miller's got five assists, no turnovers. Well, and that's the type of stuff that, again, allows Carolina to be so explosive offensively because, you know, they're not wasting opportunities. Thompson with six. There's a scramble. Lawson still playing hard. Over the top of his head to Gidrow. <laughs> Long range. Terry count it. And the beat goes on for Roy Williams. by Terry, got it back. No change of possession, no new shot clock. The foul on the drive. Well, you don't think that both of these teams have some pride? You look at the hustle with Carolina as they have all even. Just a little quicker, a little better. Come on, Len, give me your best Johnny Most imitation. Havlicek stole the ball. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. I'd ruin my voice. I wouldn't be able to speak the rest of this game. Boy, late and that night, might be a good thing. <laughs> late at night, listening uh, from the Chicago area when I was a kid, with Johnny Most doing the Celtics on WBZ. Great time. Havlicek, a teammate of, uh, of Bob Knight. And a gravelly voice. Havlicek from Havlicek stole the ball to DJ steals the ball. <laughs> That's a Celtic pride. Griffin. Easy lane to the bucket off the follow. He's got 10 in the game. Talk about the numbers of the point guards. A moment ago, neither point. Wes Miller, Ty Lawson, without a turnover tonight. And Miller now in for Lawson. But in Lawson's last four games, he's had 33 assists and only five turnovers. Eight. 8-8 eight, eight, tonight, 9, a season and career high in terms of assists. And again, a prime example of why a lot of the veterans have had to take a back seat because of these youngins. And Ty Lawson, I mean, he hasn't exactly always been perfect, but he is a consummate point guard for this particular system as well as he runs the floor, manages the half court, and as you said, minimize the turnovers. At 15 turnovers early in the first several games of the season and really limited that over the last several games. And Bobby Fraser, remember, was the starting point guard to start the year. He's played in seven games. He's been out with a foot injury. That's been a bit of a mystery. Came back, they tried to play him, rested him for a while, but it keeps bothering him. And now he's gotten his third opinion, three different doctors on what's wrong with them. And Roy Williams said, I feel like we're really close to getting him back. Uh, but they, they do need to figure out exactly what the deal is with that. And there's been some talk about a red shirt, medical red shirt. And he is at that magic number of seven games, 20%. Quentin Thomas also out three to four weeks with a stress fracture in his left foot. So all of this being done without as many bodies as they started the season and important ones. Yeah, it comes down to... If they played, if these things occurred in the first half, the injury occurred in the first half, 20% or less of the games played in that particular season, then you can apply for a medical hardship and, you know, possibly get it granted by the NCAA. Mm -hmm. And that seven games is that magic number. But they, they're not banking on it. They do expect to get Fraser back shortly. Heating. Off one foot, two seconds left on the clock. Got it to go. Jail Keating with his first deuce. Copeland gets a bucket down along the baseline. Mike Copeland, sophomore from Winston-Salem, R.J. Reynolds High School.
More subs set to check in for both clubs. Quick timeout to get those subs in, Went. Well, you look at the month of December, that's the kind of month that the Tar Heels love. And the ones that have gone undefeated, five of the six have reached the Final Four. And this is a team that has Final Four capability, this North Carolina team that we're looking at. And it's amazing because of the impact and the contribution of freshmen. And you go back to that freshman class that included uh, the team, the names that eventually won the national championship in 05, Felton May, McCants, that you see similarities between the two. I guess talent-wise, you have to, just the level of talent. But this is as athletic as that team was. Boy, this, this is a team that can play a number of different ways. Yeah, and, and that's because they also have a quality mix of experienced veterans out there. Ray Sean Terry, one of those guys who's really seen his individual numbers suffer because he's had to share the time. You know, you talk about other guys from last year, Ginyard, they can get Fraser back, obviously Danny Green, and of course Tyler Hansborough. These are guys that have had some experience, and they also felt the sting of losing in the NCAA tournament. Last year, bounced out by George Mason in the second round. You know, that's going to have some, hopefully for Carolina standpoint, positive impact as they go and get ready for the tournament coming in March. Just tuning in, UNLV Texas Tech coming up when we are done. Under a minute here in Chapel Hill. Dewey Burke off the bench, or Wood off the bench for Roy Williams, some of the guys who normally don't get into the games. John Mimmo off the bench for Fred Hill in the blocking foul call. And you know what I like? I mean, you see the Carolina guys standing up, but also the Rutgers guys. Here they are down by 40. And they see their teammates who rarely get in the ball game. And when Mimo made that shot, everybody on that bench was clapping. And that's a good sign. And that's something I think Fred Hill can look upon and see that, you know, some of the values and principles he's trying to impart are starting to take hold, that guys care about each other. And that's the building block for team. And, you know, you talk about the guys like Dean Smith and Bobby Knight. Many times, it's not about the guy making a spectacular play. What they want to instill in their guys is to recognize the passer. Remember in our day, I mean, in my day, and then later on in your day, guys would pass, make a good pass, a guy would score. Immediately after yep. you score, you turn, and you point to the passer and give him all due credit. You know, that's what the team is all about. And Copeland with the foul and the bucket. So a couple of three-point opportunities here late. And I distinctly remember Carolina being the first team that I'd ever saw really doing that, watching them on television when I was in high school. And again, nice ball movement right there. And get it back in. You don't see guys doing that that much. Boy, Williams still coaching here. Up by 40 with under six seconds left. Bailey... Makes it an 87-48 game. Final seconds. Carolina, an impressive win again at home. First of five straight home games. Wood with the miss. So there's your final. 87-48, to the number two team in the nation. North Carolina with an easy victory here at home against Fred Hills. Scarlet Knights, Rutgers falling to 6-6. Six and six. North Carolina moving to 11-1. we got post-game extra on ESPN News. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. We're going to send you back to Fred Hickman. That is Bob Knight looking for 880. Dean Smith, number maybe surpassed, but the legacy endures.